What is up, guys? Maddie X Builds here, and today uh, we are finally doing the proper install on the Stark Fabworks seat brackets. So, let me tell you a little bit about these brackets. A good friend of mine that we have met through the channel, Todd Stark, he owns a fabrication company in Texas called Stark Fabworks. I'll leave all the links to his social medias and his website in the description below. So what Todd offers is an 88 to 98 bracket that will bolt to your stock floorboard spots. Inners, you may have to drill holes for those, but that's not the biggest deal. Um, and I have a good example for y'all. I have an electric driver's seat and I have a manual passenger seat. So you guys will get to see both styles that you have um, and different ways that you'll have to mount them. I have previously mounted this driver's seat um, a while back. I had to start driving my truck, but I figured I'd go ahead and pull it back out to give you guys a good idea of what it looks like for an electric seat and what it looks like for a manual seat. So on your electric seat, on your rails, you will have, um, I'm gonna show you all this one just cause it's factory. So you're gonna have these little tabs sticking out where they mounted in the 2015. And then you're gonna have these little pegs um, on both sides. Now, um, it's kind of flip flopped cause you're looking at a different seat. This is the driver's seat. So the electric seats have a, a rod and a, a basically a, a channel of all thread all the way through here so when you drill those pegs out on here you actually have to drill all the way through it and punch out uh, the holes and it'll leave you a hole and Todd gives you all the hardware you need um, to bolt these brackets in but he has relief cuts for this tab um, this was the end that had the little hooks on it so you just take a cutoff wheel or grinder grind that down make it smooth he put a relief cut in there you don't have to cut it out but it just makes it cleaner he put another cut out for the little dimple that's in the middle right here that way you don't even have to deal with it and then like i said you got to grind the peg out um, and then drill the hole for it to put your hardware through and then for the outer it has two holes there you'll have to drill all that out it's kind of a turd and then you'll have this big plate which you actually see the two holes that's these same two holes so you'll actually i took a cutoff wheel and cut it off here which i'll show you guys on this one because i haven't done it yet and then you basically have to grind this whole plate off and then i already have one hole because this is a manual seat and then i'll just have to i'll probably drill the hole before i cut this off that way i have the template and then you already have the hole on the far end I'll notch these off, notch these off, and then we'll just have to drill a hole here. So what I'll do is I'll grind this peg off, knock the hole, set the bracket on there, put the bolt through it. That way that gives me a template up here of where to put the hole, mark it, drill it, bolt it up. And then on your inners, since the OBSs have this hump in the floor, what Todd does and what I did on this one for my driver's seat, which really worked well, right at the point where you bolt it up, I basically cut the rest of that rail off. So when you slide the seat back, that rail is not sticking way out here. Like you see that one is basically, I'll cut it off right here. That way this won't be in the way when we're trying to scoot the seat back and it won't be hitting your floorboard. So that's the basic rundown. Um, like I said, I've already done my driver's seat, which was electric. It's a little bit different, but now you guys know the difference. And we'll get started on this one. I'll set you guys up on a time lapse while I'm grinding all this off and getting the drilling done. And then we'll pick you guys back up. I'll show you all how the brackets bolt on, how to know which side you've got and what. And then uh, probably off camera, I'll go ahead and put my covers back on since I bought cloth seats to redo this. And then I'm putting my high country covers back on. So I won't show you all that. And then once we get that done, we'll move into the truck, get our holes marked. Don't mind my trashy carpet. I need new carpet. This was just stained and you can see how well the stain works. Wherever you put your feet, it goes away. So anyways, we'll come in here. We'll screw these down and then uh, get those holes marked, drill them, and then set the hardware in there. 
And then there you go, you've got it. But stay tuned, here we go. So we finally got all the grinding and cutting and all that done. Um, Y'all see in the time lapse, I spent a lot of time on this one. It's it's just the way it is. Um, if you've got a better way or you can think, well, pff, idiot, why didn't you do it this way? Go on right ahead. Um, I have the most basic of you know tools i've got a harbor freight grinder harbor freight bower grinding disc and cutting wheels um the safety guy's pissed off because i don't have the the uh protection deal on the grinder but i live life on the edge and my life insurance policy is really good so anyways that's where you're going to spend most of your time is cutting that that piece that sticks out cutting that off because it's i don't know if it's like fused to it or what but you can't like just cut a certain amount and then it's open and then chisel it out y'all saw me using the chisel what i was doing was basically kind of scoring it a little bit chiseling it cutting that up cutting that off and basically kind of working my way farther and farther into it but basically you pretty much just got to grind it uh even todd said most of the ones he does he just burns up a whole flappy wheel and just grinds it to death um, this one, when I cut that stud off, kind of went a little too gung-ho at it, and I was kind of at an angle, and I actually cut into the rail here, um, but nothing a little pawn shop welder couldn't fix. Just uh, turned it as low as I could because this stuff's really thin. It was trying to burn through at first, but I just threw a few tacks on here and kind of built it up and got it back close to the hole. I don't need the hole perfect. I just need a little bit of meat there when I put the washer and bolt through. It has something to hold on to um and then you know these of course we cut the wings off i went ahead and kind of ground them down um you you know you could grind it all the way off if you wanted to you don't have to because todd puts these wonderful um reliefs in here for that so that you don't have to 
Um, so basically, you see that bottom hole? That's our hole we're gonna use for our bottom bolt. I'm gonna get that one started and then get this top one started. And then you can see that bottom hole is kind of not right. Um, that's the one I piloted. Um, and I drilled my cheap drill bits weren't wanting to cooperate. So the one I finally got that was sharp, it kind of went kind of went off to the side. Um, doesn't really matter because he gives you washers in your hardware. So what I'm going to do is just open that up a little bit with a step bit, just enough to to get us where we need to be. And then you know this this black face of the bracket with a washer that's going to hold the the bolt. And then we've got our inner bracket that's on this side he's got a relief cut for that bottom piece and for that little hump so you don't even have to deal with it um and then what we'll do is we'll get let me get my hands right we'll get our bolt started right here um and then just kind of you know center the bracket up from left to right get it pretty well centered up and then we'll mark that hole drill it put our hardware through and then all we've got to do is tighten up our hardware, you know, at all uh, here, here on our new hole we drill, down here. And then um, you probably don't have to use both of these, but I will just because just it comes with he Todd gives us the hardware for both. So I'm going to use both. Um, before I do that, I'm going to throw a little coat of spray paint on this raw steel so it doesn't rust on me or anything. Um, then I'll get the brackets bolted on. I'll show y'all what that looks like once they're bolted on. And then off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and put my covers, my uh, new high country covers on here. Y'all don't need to see that. It doesn't pertain to, you know, the install of these brackets. But I'm gonna get those on and then we'll come in here and I'll show y'all uh, the method I use to mark the floor for the inner brackets. Um, Depending on your setup, if you had captains or whatever, your holes might be right. Um, I can't remember exactly what Todd said, um, but I think he said most of them on the inner bracket, you got to mark and drill your own holes. Not a big deal. The floor pan metal is really thin, so it doesn't take the greatest drill bit in the world to drill through it. But basically, just to kind of give you all an idea to be thinking about, his outer bracket will perfectly line up with your factory holes. Um, doesn't matter if you had a bench, buckets, whatever. These outer holes will be the same. Um, so I get those and just get the bolt kind of started so I know it's right. And then I'll, uh, I'll have the carpet pulled up, of course. I'll take a pin and kind of mark the holes. And then um, what I like to do is I measure the brackets on the seat. I measure the distance between the two holes and then I compare that with a tape measure to where I put a mark through the hole to make sure I'm, you know, pretty close to in the right spot. And then we get them drilled and set the carpet back down, set the seat down on it, bolt it up, good to go. So here's what you're gonna look like with the passenger seat. Um, and I, I don't know, the whole time I did my driver's seat and the seat, I like to do it like this in the bed. That way I knew like which bracket was which. Like you know, the logoed side is the outside of each. And you know the inner is. Um, so basically the way to decode the inners, you kind of can't, I guess you could technically get them flip-flopped. What you want is um, how they, they s curve you want the the floor mounts to be towards the inside of the seat so like you know if i had the driver's side over here the s would be out here towards the outside of the seat so the way to know that your inner is on the right side is that the s is towards the inside of the seat which we have um and since mine has a center console and the dash swap and all that mine's a little bit different um I just kind of threw them threw the bolts in and set it in there and there is a little bit of play in the bolt holes where you can you can kind of put the bracket more centered or you know whatever i had them centered at first and then uh since i have the center console mine's a, mine's a little off centered um so my seats don't line up like yours will um i already had my console clearanced for this bolt but basically it, it was so close that what i did 
for my situation, yours won't have to be like this, but mine, I uh, just loosen the bolts a little bit and move the bracket to where you can see it's not centered. Like there's a little bit of the bracket hanging off of this side and then you can see some of the rail on this side. I did that to move the brackets as far over towards the inside of the truck as possible. That way the seat itself will be farther away from the console. Um, just a little trick for yours if you're using a jump seat or if you're using a full console or if you're making your own console it probably won't matter but those are just some little little tricks that uh i had to do that might help you out um something to think about if you know you start your outer bolts but you can't you know get get it to go where it needs to go you're kind of getting smushed you can always play with the brackets and if you need even more extreme um adjustment for your situation all you got to do is take the bracket off and then you could get you a step bit like this and uh take a step bit or a uni bit and drill the hole out and that'll allow this bracket to move farther there you just don't want to go too big because you need a little bit of meat left you know for these washers to you know apply a clamp to and not have so much that you know the they'll loosen up and move so that's that for the bracket install i'm going to get the cushion slapped on and then get it in the truck um since i had the cushions off what i did and what i suggest you guys do um if you don't have carpet that's the best situation um because it's a little easier to mark the floor it's hard to drill through this carpet um nine times out of ten it'll just wad up on your drill bit um so what you want to do what I suggest, you can do it a different way if you've got a better idea. You know, everybody struggles their own way. I would set the seat down in here. Since your outers match the factory holes, I would set it down, get the bolts just started on the outers, and then figure out that'll, you know, that'll at least get the seat straight, you know, to where it's not wonky one way or the other. It'll get it where it needs to be forward and back for the brackets. And then you can go in here. And what I did, since I have deadener on the floor and deadener kind of smushes, I set it in here and then put this through the bracket hole and since I don't have cushions and all that I could reach and I just applied pressure to this pin and what it's going to do is put an indention in the deadener in the floor and I'll know where to drill my hole at and then from there I'll you know kind of cut I'll use a razor blade and cut the carpet and the insulation and then we'll be set but um, this is kind of the part where you do it your own way like I said, I'm, I'm going to start my outer bolts to get the seat centered. Marked my holes already. Get a drill bit out, drill it, cut the carpet where you need it to be. This carpet came out of an extended cab truck. It was just kind of a band-aid thing. So it's already got these holes marked. They're completely way off for this. But, uh, but yeah, kind of find your own way. I gave you my suggestion of how I'm going to do it. Like I said, if you can think of a brighter way to do it, then do it your way. But uh, I'll pick you guys back up once I get the seat in and uh, get it all adjusted and show you guys basically how much adjustment you have and where you sit. And uh, we'll wrap it up. There we are. Bolted in, mounted up. Um, don't mind mine. I, I had to, uh, like I said, on my deal, I made my own bench and uh, I had to basically foobar the seat rails off of the actual high country frames. So I bought cloth seats um, that had an electric driver's seat and a manual passenger seat. And, uh, you know, obviously I have to use the manual one because of the handle. I can't put the high country switch panel on there because it won't do anything for us. So, you know, I could get the seat all set up and then put it on there for, you know, looks. But other than that, it makes no sense. So I'll just get some uh, SEM dye, you know, that stuff you can get in O'Reilly's or whatever and dye it that mocha, brown, chocolate, whatever they call it. But uh, yeah, that's it. All mounted up. And guys, remember, if you're just doing the seats and you're doing like a jump seat or you're making your own console, it's going to be a little bit different than this. Um, you know, the, the tightness here in the middle of the console is based on how we fabricated this dash and, you know, measured it and centered it and centered the console. You know, it seems like both seats are kind of squeezing it. But, you know, that's not on Todd at all. That's on how I want, I want to be clear on that. That's how 
my truck is configured it's it's making the seats fit really tight your truck won't be like that you know unless you're doing what i'm doing but yeah to give you guys another perspective um if you're trying to decide between manual seats or electric seats the driver's seat is electric and notice you know on the window line how much lower that seat sits and how much higher this seat sits um it's a good few inches um your bottom sits almost the same, but on the electric seat, and Todd suggested this, he was like, man, you're gonna want an electric, at least driver's seat. The electric seats um, have that, that height adjustment, so you can actually lower the bottom of the seat to make it lower, which is what I wanted, so I could sit lower and farther away. Um, and this just gives you a, a true visual example of the height difference between manual and electric seats if you're trying to decide um, and then also, you know, because of the wonderful hump in the floor, you could space the rails up a little bit higher to get the rail to go back a little bit farther, but the manual seat won't go as far back as the electric one will. And this gap looks really tight, but with me sitting in it, you know, I can still put my feet way up here. And again, this isn't the right dash. This is, you know, a 2015 dash. It's not an OBS dash. So as most of y'all know, the OBS dash sits quite a bit farther in, so you would have even more room. Um, but I, I can't say that I'm uncomfortable in this in this position. I'm not I'm not complaining. If I had to ride in this truck for a couple hours, I'd be fine. Um, so yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Um, I'm gonna walk around and show y'all the uh, driver's side, just so y'all can see kind of what that side looks like mounted up. So it's about the same. I'm missing this little trim piece right here, but you can see it looks the same, um, but the seat sits a little bit lower. And you can see there, there's a bunch more room here between the seat and the dash than there is up there between the seat and the dash. But you can also see like, I've got mine leaned back quite a bit further. So, just some little things to consider if you're going to do this swap um me i suggest everybody to get electric seats whether it's on a uh, marketplace or junkyard whatever you're going to want an electric seat just so you can get that adjustment all the way down i don't know for me i like to be as low as possible and as far back as possible but that's just me so that's something to consider but anyways i'll leave all the links in the description you guys hit up stark fab works Mr. Todd Stark made an amazing set of seat brackets. Uh, he makes a few other things. Just go on his website and check them out. And we're working on a few things between, you know, his truck and, and our truck. I'm trying to, we're trying to kind of test fit a couple things a, across different trucks to make sure they all work out. But he's working on some uh, coilover, some front coilover conversion uh, control arms. He's working on a uh, OBS LS swap turbo kit. Um, so as far as we're concerned, that's one of the first ones out there or the first one out there. But um, you guys can look on his social media pages. He mounts the turbo over here and it still clears the uh, high mount AC compressor. So that's a big thing. He made it so that his turbo kit will fit around the AC compressor so you can have AC and a turbo kit that fits the OBS the way it's supposed to instead of having to use 99 to 06 turbo logs and flipping them the other way, you know, and then you still got to fab a bunch because it just doesn't work right. But anyways, all his links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Peace out, be human, and we'll see you later.